hello everyone so in this video i will discuss that what is dna denaturation so without any delay let's start the video so first that what are the learning outcome of this lecture so in this lecture i will discuss about that what is dna denaturation then its molecular mechanism then what are the causes of dna denaturation then how we can monitor the dna denaturation and finally the applications of dna denaturation so all these topics will be covered in this lecture so first what is a dna denaturation so the dna denaturation it's simply the separation of two strands of the dna like you know that dna has two strands so here you can see this is a typical dna molecule which have two strands this is the strand 1 and this is the strand 2 so dna has two strands as you know now in the dna denaturation what happens these two strands they just separated out like this if this dna this double stranded dna undergo denaturation so the strands they will just separated out like you can see in this animation so this separation of the double stranded dna into single strand is known as dna denaturation now what is the molecular mechanism behind this dna denaturation so the basic reason of this dna denaturation is the breakage of hydrogen bond between the base pair like here you can see here we have two strands and in this strand you can see this is the sugar phosphate backbone and these are the nitrogenous bases so as you can see here we have hydrogen bond between these nitrogenous bases like the three hydrogen bond between guanine and cytosine and two hydrogen bond between thymine and adenine so what happens during the denaturation that these hydrogen bonds they just you can say they get broken so as these hydrogen bonds break now these two strands they separated from each other so this is the basic mechanism of this dna denaturation now the causes of dna denaturations or you can say the methods of dna denaturation so first is heat so by increasing the temperature you can cause the dna denaturation because by increasing temperature so they will just you can say break the hydrogen bond between the dna base pair so as the breakers of hydrogen bonds the dna denaturation will takes place so the one cause is the high temperature or you can say the heat then next is a high ph so as we know if we increase the ph of the dna then the dna will get denaturated because this dna is very highly sensitive to the ph at the ph greater than 9 or even greater than 11 the dna get denaturated because their ions they will interfere with the base pairing or you can say the interfere with the hydrogen bonding between the bases so that's why this high ph can denature the dna the next cause is chemicals yeah why different chemicals we can also cause the dna denaturation like for example formamide so this formamide chemical it just lower down the melting temperature of dna so as the concentration of this formamide increase the melting point will decrease and it will ultimately cause the denaturation of dna if we certainly increase the heat similarly the next chemical is dimethyl sulfoxide that is dmso so similar to formamide it is also Uh, you can say it also lower the melting temperature of the dna then salts so these salts they have ions so they will also interfere with the hydrogen bonding and also cause the dna denaturation finally the urea so this urea it work as hydrogen donor and acceptor so it break the hydrogen bond between the two strands of dna so by these ways you can cause the dna denaturation next how we can monitor the dna denaturation or how you can know that dna denaturation is there so many ways are there like first uv spectroscopy so we can just measure the changes in the absorbance at specific wavelength and as we know due to the dna denaturation the absorbance increases as the dna get denatured so absorption 
increase because now we have two separate stands and they have their exposed bases so they will absorb light much more than the compact double stranded dna so if the absorbance increases so we can say that dna is getting denatured next is fluorescent dyes so we can also use certain fluorescent dyes like cyber green so by using these dyes we can also monitor the dna denaturation next real time pcr so in the real time pcr we can measure the you can say the amount of denaturation in the real time by using the fluorescence labeled dyes or you, which are called as probes so as the denaturation increase there will be increase in the fluorescence and which will ultimately indicate the dna denaturation next applications of dna denaturation so it is used in pcr so pcr that is polymerase chain reaction so which is a technique which is used to amplify the dna so in the pcr the dna first get denatured and make the rom or the place for the primer to be added so the denaturation is used in the pcr next it is also used in dna sequencing when we sequence the dna by using sanger's method where we just synthesize a complementary strand from the template strand so at that point we need the denatured dna so denaturation also used in the dna sequencing methods then dna microarray so dna microarray is a chip in which the single stranded dna they are just attached so in order to attach the single stranded dna we have to denature the dna so we can say the application of this denaturation is also in the formation of dna microarray then southern blotting it is a technique in which we just hybridized two dna strands with each other so for the hybridization the dna strand they should be single stranded so that's why we use dna denaturation in the southern blotting and finally the denaturation can also be used for the development of personalized medicine so this is all about the denaturation so hope you like the videos guys see you in the next video till then Take care.